Hey, what's up, guys? I'm very excited to open box a brand new Xiaoxing Pro 13 with the latest AMD R7 4800U, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage from China. Well, the package looks much more fresh to me because the general and normal laptops comes with a standard um, gray package. If you can see from the tag, you can see that the RAM solid state drive are pretty large and most impressively it has a QHD 2K IPS panel which also covers approximately 100% sRGB garment. Now let's just use a knife to open box and take the beautiful baby outside. Outside the box you've got pretty tiny chargers, manuals and a grayish or dark gray laptop. Well it is in Chinese I'm pretty sure that you can't read it so just skip it. The charger comes with a Chinese three pin charger and on the other side is supposed USB type C. So if you have your own just local type C 35 watts, uh, 65 watts plus charger, you can just plug it on. There's nothing to worry about using your own charger. Although it weighs about 1.23 kilograms approximately, but it doesn't feel really heavy on hand. It is pretty light because it's just small. On the A side, there is just a dark Lenovo logo, not really like Dell or HP. They prefer to put a very large logo over there, looking um, pretty ugly. It is built fully metallic on both sides, front and back. It feels pretty premium on hand, not like 14 inch, which is uh, acceptable level, and 15 inch, which is pretty cheap plastic on the back side. The back side, the premium feel is still there, and you can see the two fans inside, and that's the secret of the powerful laptop being so small. There's nothing to complain about on the finish of this laptop and you can see two sound bars even at the back. We can expect some good sound quality from this laptop. There are two Type-C ports on one side. The left one is for charging, the right one can use for video output but you can also use the left one for video output if you want. Um, there's not enough ports on this laptop because there's only one Type A, one uh, headphone jack, and one power button on the other side. You definitely want to see an additional Type A port on this laptop to make it more convenient to use. There is still no anti dust reader on the back side, but it's not really a big issue considering its price range, which is only 5,000 yuan. Um, you can just use your one hand to open it, but uh, wow, it's not really a good idea because you may break your laptop. The front glass panel looks beautiful. It's quite reflective, but as any premium laptops, this type of glossy display all feels reflective. The keyboard feels really good, although the travel is short, but it's very responsive. The trackpad is a glass trackpad, I feel. I cannot really confirm. It feels really better than the 14 or 15 inch of Xiaoxin laptop. Overall feeling, well, the 30 inch version is a pretty nicely built laptop and will feel something like a kind of premium in its price range. It's definitely not premium compared to premium priced laptops, but if you compare to budget ones, then it's much better. If you open the lid, and you can see the keyboard light automatically turn on with the screen on. Just in a few seconds, you will go to the desktop without any hesitation. For daily apps such as Lenovo Manager, the mail, the desktop, the calculator, and the task manager, well, um, these are not on the very far side, but it's just on the middle side, the responsive rate. Um, it's pretty acceptable considering it's a 30 inch laptop and uh, definitely it does not want to boost its performance so frequently to make the laptop too hot. Now let's just go to a video to check out the sound and screen quality.
Our next guest, all she was trying to do was catch a train in the London tube, and now she is one of the hottest videos on internet. Here's why. The sound quality is pretty good on top of this laptop, but probably due to the limited size of this laptop, it put two fans and a pretty large battery inside. Um, the sound loudness is pretty limited. We have put to 100 loudness on the system. It sounds pretty similar to many other laptops, 13, 14, 15 inch, with just default 66%, but it's not a big issue unless you want to impress somebody with your sound loudness. The screen is a premium one. It's definitely better than most 1080p screen. It's bright, contrasty, and it just very appealing to your eye. On paper, it has a very high performance uh, internal processing unit RAM, 16 gigabytes of RAM inside, which is excellent. The battery is also very large, uh, 56 watt hour, and you have 60 watt hours out of the battery. If you just uh, turn it to a more um, daily usable brightness because the default brightness is a bit too high for daily use and uh, you can just have a uh, 10 hours idle battery life and in light work you can expect six to eight hours or seven hours on average even if you work very heavily i think you can get something like three hours plus battery life on top of it without any issue the ram are sold on board 16 gigabytes so you cannot change but it's generally good enough for most people the graphic unit has 512 shaders coupled with the 3200 frequency RAM. It should give you MX150 level of the gaming experience. The LCD panel is from AUO, a Taiwanese company, which is pretty good. The solid state drive is from West Digital Black Drive SN 730, which is also a very premium solid state drive. The Wi-Fi card is from Realtek, a uh, cheap one, but it's definitely usable. You may wish to change it to the Intel AX200 if you wish to change yourself to have a better internet over the laptop. After some simple benchmarks, everything is pretty standard on paper. Uh, the RAM speed is okay, it's pretty good. It's slower than Intel, but it's definitely good enough in AMD series. It's a progress for AMD. The ASSD, SSD benchmark is also very good. The 4K are very fast. The sequential read and write are fast. The Sandy Bench R15 is pretty amazing. Considering its small size, the benchmark is even higher than the 15 version counterparts for the multi core CPU. Also, the OpenGL is also higher than the 15 inch version. While sometimes there are some um, differences inside which is understandable and here the single core is slightly lower than the 15 inch version but there is nothing too different everything was just around the same 10 percent difference at most moving to the stability test of the system after a few minutes after the benchmark it just goes down to 40 Celsius degree of the system which is very low after starting the CPU stress test the frequency goes up to 3 point something gigahertz after a few seconds of hesitation, which is pretty strange. Now it's around 3 gigahertz with a 25 watt power envelope. The temperature is pretty decent. 
just below 60 Celsius degree. This envelope is 5 watts beyond the limit of Xiaoxin 15 inch. After approximately 10 minutes of stability test, there's nothing changed in the performance output. The package power envelope is still 25 watts with exactly the same frequency. So if you ask me whether it is stable, it is as stable as rock, so long as your external environment is not too hot. The temperature is also pretty low. At the beginning, we have 66 Celsius degree and now only 70. If we stop the CPU stress test and open the GPU stress test, the GPU very quickly is clocked to 1.75 GHz ratio, which is a very amazing speed. You can definitely expect good gaming performance, at least surpassing MX150 in GPU intensive games, should the power envelope not being a restricting factor. It only consumes about 17 18 watt hour battery, which is pretty good. Now let us just add the CPU inside the test, and expectedly, you can see that the power rise up a bit to 25 watt envelope with the GPU limited to around 80 to 90 hundred megahertz. This frequency is about 10 to 20 percent than the corresponding version of Xiaoxin 15, and also the CPU is slightly higher than the Xiaoxin 15, which was 2.5 gigahertz, and here we have 2.7 gigahertz. It will not make a very big difference for the CPU side, but for the GPU side, 10 to 20 percentage of speed difference will make you feel it quite different. Techno that currently we did not press any FM plus Q key, and now it's just a normal mode, which is generally good enough for most gaming. You do not really need to stretch the system to very hot status to play most games. Now let's just try to press FM plus Q to enable the performance mode. Unfortunately, FM plus Q on this model is not working, which is pretty strange. On the temperature side of the chassis, since it's a metallic body and it is very small, you can definitely feel the device turning a bit warm. But there's nothing very uncomfortable, and at most, you can just feel warm at the keyboard, and it's pretty cool on the warm palm side. Thank you. Please, sub please subscribe and like my video if you enjoy watching my reviews.